they would grow up and what they would look like. Now, it was all hideous commercialization TV, but, but it had a desired effect. A lot of people got weeping, and a lot of people had that, that epiphany moment of, actually, you know what, if they keep eating this, they're going to die young. And that was kind of interesting. I think it would be motivational. Well, in fact, you know, um, actually, Aaron started talking about <clears throat> the fact that this is no longer, within probably a year, this is no longer simply going to be looked at as a communication device acquiring information from body-worn sensors and then sending it off into the cloud. The fundamental reality is, and, and I hope um, any representatives from the three companies I'm about to mention who are in the audience who disagree with what I'm going to say, please do that. But within the past year, um, Microsoft, um, Dell, and HP all announced that they're going into the cell phone business. But what was critical about that announcement is that they said they were going to look at the healthcare space and they were going to be able to put the computer capability that they now have incorporated into their laptops into that cell phone. As soon as I do that, this no longer is a communication device. It's a diagnostic device. Now the sensor information that's being acquired is being analyzed for my personal data, which says, Jay, your normal blood pressure is 110 over 75. Over the past six months, you've been trending up. This will be my personal diagnostic device. The more computer capability we put into this, the more that this will become both for the patient and for the physician, um, the electronic black bag. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think to add to that, I mean, one thing that we had a, actually interesting debate on that yesterday, right? And, and what you're looking for is some, some way for people, right, to know what will happen and to motivate them, right, to change their behaviors. With this device, right, I think every single one of them have Facebook today, right? I mean, if, if you're looking at that type of a space, I think connecting social, you know, social applications together with medical, there's a huge opportunity and the platform is there. Right. That's really a great way of, of really achieving the same thing you're looking for. Hi, I'm Helene Malibet. I'm a physician in California. I um, actually have two questions. One, how do you get the carriers to pay for this? <laughs> and two, is anybody working with each state regarding the medical, the, cal the medical bylaws and business applications as to how the physician will, what should I say? they won't get in trouble with their medical board by being electronic and using these devices because um, the bylaws are not written anywhere near for technology. Um, in California, I do know you have to be standing in the state of California to write a prescription for a patient. But the internet, you can be anywhere, talk to your patient, do a video call mm -hmm. and write a prescription that if I'm in New York, I'm breaking California law. So is there anybody working on the legislation of that and how to get the insurance carriers to show that they could still probably make their profit but have a healthier America? Can I? Simon? I'll, I'll start by the answer is no. Um, <laughs> but there's lots of industry bodies that are beginning to work right. on this stuff. Interesting, you did make the comment so, so I don't have the right answer for you today, okay? But as an industry uh, working with government, we need to put pressure on to make them change the way they do business or medicine. But um, interesting enough, I thought I'd bring up something that you did mention for folks who didn't know this. A lot of people are now using video conferencing technology. Now it's high def. Now it's look through a window quality to do things like remote... Um, <coughs> not just the uh, face-to-face stuff, but things like MRIs and X-rays and all this sort of stuff on an international basis. And, and for those of you who are not already aware of it, it's really interesting space that you can get this done very cheaply and very quickly. Yeah, the ATA, which is one of these you know, industry bodies, is I think probably very active there. I know that uh, in the meetings I go to, they're actively involved with trying to get the uh, government, including state governments, to understand the value and the, and the, and the role of remote patient monitoring, so. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask a qu 
Okay, I wanted to ask a question which is a little bit orthogonal to the discussion. Ned, I loved your comment about potato chips, <laughs> and I wonder why our uh, you know, CEA is continuing to allow the caterers to put potato chips in the lunches instead of <laughs> carrots and the celery. I think that's something that could be easily done and you know, improve each of our health a little bit. Well, it's not just CEA. I mean, when I go to the American College of Cardiology meeting, <laughs> And we've just had this symposium on hyperlipidemia, and there's a coffee break with Danish. <laughs> I need the work. <laughs> and by the way, the question about the carriers or the, or the insurance companies, as, as I think many of you know, uh, United Health Group, uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield uh, now do cover uh, telemedicine uh, consultations over the internet. Um, and why do they do that? For all the right reasons. Um, keeping the patient in their home is a heck of a lot less expensive than that patient coming in with the same problem into a hospital emergency room because their doctor's office is closed. Uh, so the carriers are becoming very, very receptive to this. And I can also tell you that the present, the new administration of CMS is looking very carefully. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Donald Berwick, looking very carefully at um, the uh, potential for reimbursement for uh, these types of services. Uh, the second question with respect, with respect to uh, state um, licensure boundaries, um, that we just need to do a frontal lobotomy on most of the medical licensing bodies. Um, <laughs> because everyone thinks that they, they do special medicine in their state that no other state does. <laughs> you know, they think I'm reading the textbook of medicine of Virginia when you're reading the textbook of medicine of California. Um, <laughs> right, there, there is a reason this happens, but I prefer my comment not be recorded, so I'm not gonna <laughs> <say>. <laughs> We only have time for one quick more question, right over here. Last sure. question. The uh, family uh, doctor, the practitioner, seems to do two main things these days. Route people to specialists and do an annual physical. Uh, it sounds like they really shouldn't do a physical but get the data from the whole year and give an opinion. Okay. And it sounds like we, like a Volvo or a BMW, can get a text message saying go to service and go to this doctor. What do you see happening in the future? Where's this all going? Well, the annual physical, and I'll let this be recorded, is the most ridiculous thing in the world. <laughs> the only thing it tells you is you got sick. It doesn't tell you that you were getting sick. We need the continuous recording. We have to move away from this episodic evaluation to more continuous evaluation. But the continuous evaluation has to be totally intuitive, like the radio. It's got to be the wristwatch type of form factor. It's got to be the necklace type of form factor that's not only a piece of jewelry, but it's a medical sensing uh, type of device. I, I'm sure many of you, many of the technology folks in the room know that there are many companies that now make um, shirts that you can wash that have embedded sensors in them. I put on my shirt, it's constantly um, sensing uh, my parameters. That's what we're moving uh, toward. It's just going to be a totally intuitive device. All of these technologies, and I apologize for what I'm about to say, you're going to buy them in Best Buy. That's where this is all um, moving to. Now, where the family practitioner, the primary care internists, are critical individuals in terms of being quarterbacks for the, this new concept that people have come up with, which is really a concept that all of us have been doing all of our lives medically, and that is the medical home. They're gonna be the quarterback um, and be compensated for what they're doing, whereas they're not being compensated for what they're doing right now. And I think our time That's is That's a great time to add on, yep. Sorry. Thank you, all of you. No, this is excellent, awesome.